tonight we have with us Liberian, or should I say Siberian, Damien Wang from the Education and Outreach team. Damien will share about what he does, the joys and challenges of being a digital engagement librarian. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Damien Wang. So some of the things that uh, my team does is uh, we'll produce resource guides as well as uh, DIY guides on how to use NLB's e-resources. And of course, uh, now with the trend of fake news and so on, we have to sort of like highlight that as well. And I'll run through some examples with you later. And of course, we have to be on social media to reach out to the people who actually need the most help. <laughs> okay, so what are some of my joys and challenges? Okay, this is a confession bit that you want to hear, right? Like, how is it like being a librarian? <sighs> you know, we are living in a very volatile and complex world, right? The, the term is V-U-C-A, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Uh, it's actually a military, uh, military term. So basically, we can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow. One of the, the things that I experience as a digital librarian is sometimes, okay, for example, if I'm doing uh, history, right, I know for certain if I invest in sufficient time and uh, hard work, I can master a certain uh, topic. But when I'm dealing with current affairs, it continues to evolve and new articles are added every day. Just think of the newspapers. Every day there are new articles. So I can't possibly know everything. So. Uh, the best method is to uh, be adaptable and to know how to find this information effectively and efficiently. So that is the, 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 the crux of the problem. Okay, so fake news is not new, all right? If you were to read all those uh, newspaper articles, you'll find that since ancient times, people have been using fake news. Uh, for those of you who, are, who have read The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, a anyone? Sun, Kuo, Yang, Yi. You'll find that he, do you know who is Zhu Keliang, the, the strategist? He purposely spread the fake news that his master is going to get married to the sister of, of Sun Qian so that he will not get assassinated. Right? So from fake news, it becomes real news. <laughs> so, in, uh, so in wartime, it's, it's justified as uh, it's, a, it's a form of, of propaganda. But in the context of Singapore, uh, this fake news, unfortunately, was picked up by a local newspaper. I, was unable to find out which newspaper. There was no title mentioned by the Singapore Medical uh, Journal. So according to that uh, research paper, it says that in 1967, there was this uh, fake news about uh, like contaminated pork. And men who consume them will find that certain parts of the body will start to shrink and disappear, and they'll die a horrible death. So there was this um, epidemic, uh, like mass hysteria where over 400 Chinese men were warded in various hospitals in Singapore. All right? It was true. And then this uh, fear spread all over Southeast Asia. And I think there was one recorded case in Hong Kong as well. Uh, those of you who are slightly older than me would remember this incident, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Besides uh, health and, uh, and food, the next concern would be money, right? Because in the past, people like to hide money under the pillow and uh, in my, my low teens. So uh, I remember as a kid, I was asking my grandmother, what's this funny dollar bill? I said, oh, this Brunei money is the same as, as Singapore's money. So since I was a kid, that was the, the, the belief, right? So since then, there's been f at least five times where fake rumors came out that the, there'll be a devaluation. So may, may, maybe the Singapore currency might grow stronger than the Brunei currency. But fortunately, this was uh, way before uh, social media. And it was easily quashed by a press statement by MES or BCCS. If it's today, <laughs> good luck to the government. <laughs> so in the past, okay, before 2007, that means before social media and uh, WordPress came out, it was expensive to publish newspapers, much less uh, a bad newspaper that, that are printed irresponsible and lousy journal articles. right? So uh, as a result, the, uh, because of this high barrier to entry, right, there are very few players, and most of them in Southeast Asia anyway, tend to be law abiding, because otherwise the government will come down hard on you. And you'll be, you'll be fine, or you might get sued by private citizens. Then uh, come the age of social media, it's free. I can create any, uh, any blog uh, through any library. Okay, besides WordPress, you can go to Wix, all this to create free uh, websites, right? And uh, I can promote it through my Facebook. So it's all free of charge. 
there's zero barrier to entry. I just need the guts to, 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 to do that. I hope that I, I don't get caught. And of course, uh, because it's, it's done anonymously, I don't care about reputation. So I can see anything I want online. And of course, with so many players, it's almost impossible for the government to clamp down. Even though um, the US elections and things like uh, Brexit, the Indonesian elections, they are focusing on politics. Uh, and then they are trying to um, get people to react emotionally and vote for the right party or, 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 or candidates. Much of it is driven by economic factors. So end of the day is dollars and cents earned through Google AdSense. So if you click any of these at all, the guy that runs the website will earn some money. So, so small cents will add up to, to many dollars. Okay, so what can we do to help us? Okay, we did a straw poll in the last couple of years. Each time we have some training, we just ask people, right? So most people that <laughs> responded to this straw poll will tell us that they will rely on online sources for information. So that means mainstream media is like maybe 50% of the time and online sources are not like number one. So people actually read the news online. And some of them don't even read local news, like Straits Times. Okay, and they easily trust the information that they receive. So as long as it's published by a somewhat credible source, I'll believe, right? And of course, they believe that it's someone else's job to check for the accuracy of the information. So if they buy a newspaper, they trust that SBH will actually do the fact-checking, right? The onus is on them. But if you read online news and from not so dubious, not so uh, uh, credible sources, right? Uh, <laughs> you're, you're playing with fire. So I'll show you some examples now, and I need you to vote by a show of hands to see whether is it real or fake news. Yeah, just a quick uh, recap. These are some of the helpful points, okay, that you can consider. So just think of source, like, uh, like uh, check check the dates. Is there something wrong with the picture, and what's the motivations? Okay, is this real or fake? This was in the wake of the WannaCry uh, viral attack. So there was this news article by hitstreet.com that says that the top patriarch from uh, Russia actually went to bless the server room with holy water. Okay? And then there's a visualization below that shows the guy getting zapped because you, you shouldn't sprinkle servers with, with any liquid, right? So real or fake news? Okay, who says fake? Okay, who says real? And let's see what's the answer. It's real. Okay, for info, history.com sounds like a fake site, but it's actually a part of the news corporation, which is managed by Dow Jones. <gasps> oh my goodness, why do they have such a funny website? <laughs> it is meant to be edgy. So, uh, you have heard of the Blue Wheel Suicide Challenge? Uh, MOE in Singapore has had issued uh, like a, a directive to all schools asking the kids to be careful. Okay, who says Blue Wheel is real? Okay, the same two hands at the back. Three, four, five. Okay, who says it's fake? Okay, I'm beginning to see some demographics. The younger people think that it's real. <laughs> okay, not, not to insult anyone. Eh? <laughs> okay, do you know that the guy who, who designed the website, he was arrested in Russia and he's now in jail? So the game is real, but the impact is fake or unproven. So even experts also don't know. Because in Russia anyway, the, 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 the suicide rate is very high. So with or without the game, teenagers will, will still kill themselves. Yeah, so it's not a, there, there, there's no causal link that's, uh, that's, that's proven. But that's not to say that you shouldn't be careful when you have teens in the house, because teens can be very angsty, right? So anything can drive them off the edge. Okay, so just now I shared something about Google News using certain things to show the trends, right? So I'll show you how to use library resources to, uh, to check for fake news, uh, or to find out more about fake news. Okay, we have this database called Factiva. Uh, okay, we have a few news databases, but this is the only one that does this analytics. So, for example, I've searched for something called Blue Wheel, all right, and I save it as a search. So you can see that uh, even though I asked for a six-month search here, between Feb 2017 to uh, May 2017, you can see an uptrend only in April and May. So it's quite a recent thing, and I think at its peak. Uh, for the week, there's about 30 to 32 cases reported, uh, or articles published, rather. Okay, then on the other hand, for the same period, 
fake news is actually, sorry, uh, like the number of suicides being uh, reported around the world in newspapers is actually a lot more. So if you're wondering, eh, where is Blue Wheel? <laughs> is this thin line here? So not many newspapers carry this news. Maybe the editors told them that don't publish, because we might not, uh, be, like, we might not look so, so credible, right? So sometimes it's good to compare, like to see what the industry uh, thinks. It's like so-called the wisdom of crowds for newspapers and magazines. My question is, uh, does NLB or anybody track uh, fake news from governments? Okay, because the uh, there is disinformation in times of war, disinformation in times of unrest, and uh, sometimes government's uh, rationale is that it's necessary for public security at certain times, and then later on they, they sort of confess. But there are times they don't confess. And I'm not talking about only the Singapore situation, and it has happened in Singapore, happens everywhere, I think. So how do, does anybody track it? Okay, let me just share an anecdote from my friend. Uh, his national service job 10 years ago as a reservist is to read newspapers from overseas. So he'll do uh, press clippings, and then he will co com compile intelligence uh, for his commander. But nowadays, with um, things like NLB's e-resources, you can do it uh, in, a, in a couple of hours. Okay, I can't really tell, but we do uh, like answer questions from government ministries as well, as and when it's needed. Thank you.